Welcome to the second in our series where John and Paul are thinking about the issues of coming out of lockdown from the perspectives of being a local minister. The focus of today is thinking about the use of our church buildings in the future. So, if you were local church ministers, what would your initial thoughts be about getting back into a church building? John? Oh, right, okay. Well, I think it would be important to have a sense of focus. So in, in terms of thinking about how we uh, re-engage with the building and use the building, to so think about that with a deg you know, degree of, uh, of focus. So I think for me, it's about intent. Uh, what's the intent of, of what we want to use the building for? It's about principles, what will guide us in the use of the building. And, and what do we bring in terms of imagination? So that's the broader, broader big picture of the stuff that I'd want to be having as my initial uh, thoughts. Yeah, what about you, Paul? Yeah, I, uh, to be a bit more specific, I think uh, there are lots of practicalities. So you, you need to do a risk assessment. Uh, you need to set up your building. Obviously, initially, we're only going to allow individuals in. But how do you do that in a safe way? Uh, is it going to be staffed? Is it not going to be staffed? Lots of questions. And that will determine uh, whether or when you can uh, open your building. And I would just want to say that um, permission, when it's given, does not mean... Uh, requirements so you don't have to open your building just because there's an opportunity to do so if you're not ready to do it yeah what yeah. about people's fears and anxieties how are you going to handle those John uh, Paul, oh, John <laughs> Paul. I, I'll, I'll go first uh, yeah uh, you th that comes into the risk assessment and uh, if you've done it well and you set the building up well you can say well we now have these steps in place to ensure that we are a, a COVID friendly or, you know, uh, a, a COVID protection friendly environment. Uh, and you need to think clearly about that. There'll be lots of advice. Uh, the Baptist Union will be giving advice on their website to help you do that. Uh, but you do need to do it well, I think, and, and think through the, the, all the implications. Uh, and, and cleaning, for example, how, how's that gonna happen? These kind of issues need to be thought through. But if you do it well, then I think you can do it with confidence. Uh, it's only when you're in contact with people for 10 minutes or so, that, that there's a risk of transmission significantly. So, so I think if, if it's individuals in church buildings, then we're fairly, fairly confident we could be reasonably safe. Yeah. And I think there's a very clear relationship between fears and the risk assessment and how we want the church to be, to be used. So I think actually now is the time, and, and hopefully you know, we're doing this anyway, and, and being in contact with people just to assure them, support them, encourage them, and, and actually it's about walking with them in this journey back into the building and some people will be coming back into the building earlier than others. So that's um, another issue to kind of walk with people with. So I, the, the whole idea of walking is quite important for me. I think you walk with people, but also in terms of the building um, to actually, you know, what it, either do it physically or to imagine uh, walking by the building, walking into the building and walking around the building so that it gives you time to kind of ask those questions in an imaginative sort of way what does this building say to the outsider who walks past about the hospitality of god what does it say as we walk in about the welcome of god and and and, and the decor the signage the interior what what does that say um but again just in just back to the fears there's lots of different people we, we tend it's very easy to think of a congregation on mass um, but actually there's key people who are leaders of groups. There are leaders of groups who use the church and I'd want to be in touch with them. I want to be in touch with leaders of the church's own groups and, and as well as those who will feel vulnerable. So it's, you know, to use the old phrase, the old word, it's a journey and walking with people with imagination and intent. Yeah. What do you think um, the, the people are really looking for then? Maybe not in three months time, but perhaps, six or nine months time hmm. in church congregations or yeah, yeah. well i think uh, at this point we we should be listening carefully to our congregations yeah uh, the spectrum from those that want things to be as they were before um which may not be possible for quite a long time and there's those on the other end of the spectrum who want to radically uh, reimagine church um and we need to get a sense of who's where and, and listen to each other 
as, as, as a, a person at the more radical edge myself, I would want to be pushing people a bit more to saying, let's reimagine how, how buildings can be used. Uh, let's think of buildings primarily as, as resources for mission, centers for mission. Uh, think about how they can be used for the community, how they can be used for the kingdom of God, rather than how do they serve our needs as congregation. Uh, and, and rethink uh, the whole idea and principle of how we use our buildings and what they're for. I think that should go into the mix. And we should be talking about that and, and asking those kind of questions right now before we make decisions about how we're going to use them. Mm, yeah. I mean, in, in one sense, I would totally agree with what Paul just said. I just knew something about the needs of the congregation because the needs of the congregation should be about fully f- fulfilling uh, the work of the kingdom of God and not just about our own personal needs. So the need of the church is actually to engage with the mission of God uh, through worship, through witness, through discipleship and so on. So how do... How, how, how are our churches at all uh, a resource, as Paul said, for the, for the kingdom? And, and not just in terms of our buildings, but the way that we lay out our buildings, the way that we use them. Um, and I think I'd want to revisit the whole idea of the church not being a citadel that protects the people when they gather, but actually a, a sign of the, the hospitality of God to a wider community. How do we welcome groups? How do we engage with those groups? How do we use it also, as, as Paul says, as a base for mission as well when you say church there john do you mean the building or the people uh, uh, the- you use church in the sense of building i think that's one of our problems that we have the same word for both and i think increasingly and hopefully from the lockdown we will increasingly see church as the people the building is a a building a church building a a, a and it's not the church and i think that is a crucial uh, change in our thinking that needs to be happening and, and continues to need to be happening and we need to just uh, uh, increasingly remember what church really is uh, and the buildings are a servant of the church and we don't need them for church to exist yeah so when i say our churches are tools to the kingdom i do mean our buildings and, and that's i you know completely agree with you just just correcting you there john theologically speaking i think that's quite yeah, important yeah. To yes 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 in the old days when we talk about chapel it was easier <laughs> yeah. so we're talking about a big change really in in the use of our buildings well you are anyway um what about local ministers then when they start to tire of all this change, you know, the people won't get on board with it or, um, you know, how, how do you keep your energy up and how do you keep your enthusiasm up for this big period of change? And I, I, after you, John, go on. Well, I think that's where you have to hold the sort of the intent with the listening together and, 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 and hold your focus but walk with people and actually remember that it, it's going to, it could well be a long journey. I liked what Paul said about listening to people across mm-hmm. the spectrum. Um, and that isn't necessarily about find, finding the middle way. It's about finding God's way in and through that. Uh, because as people engage in the conversation, they will then actually, you know, not simply move to a, a mediated way, but actually move to a, a, a way that God makes clear to us. Mm. Which is the Baptist way, discerning the mind of Christ, and we need to do that through listening. Yeah. Uh, I would say, probably for many people, we're at a stage of boredom with the way things are, and we're wanting to get into something different. So there will be a bit of energy around change. Uh, we, we saw a bit of that energy at the beginning of the lockdown, but uh, as John says, it's, it's a longer term um, transformation and change that's going on. So uh, we need to pace ourselves. Um, and I think ministers hopefully you've learned during this time that church is the body of all believers that we are the priesthood of all and it doesn't have to be you that initiates and makes everything happen hopefully in lockdown other people have been stepping up and and taking a place that maybe haven't done before people with technical skills people with other skills and let's use the whole body of christ uh, to work together uh, each playing their own part let's let's live out 1 corinthians 12 in the way that we do this so, um, Paul, what do you see being the biggest challenge then? Uh, phew. Uh, I mean, it's all the practical challenges which we touched on. I think, I think there's the challenges of um, discernment, uh, which John has touched on. What, what is God saying to us? And, and I would really want to encourage you to be asking those questions. Let's, let's consider what needs to, to be left behind. Uh, from before the lockdown and not restarted and some things can't be restarted perhaps ever uh, I was thinking of church that I belong to 
uh, where, where the, the, the luncheon club for, for the over 70s. I can't realistically see how that's going to happen no. in the church building. But there's other ways that those, uh, that community of people can be served. So let's be imaginative about that. Let's, let's think about how our buildings can first be um, uh, places of, of mission uh, in this first phase. So if they can be open for prayer, let's create prayer stations. Let's create places where people can encounter God in some way, shape or form. Um, let's look at creative ways we can use the outside of our buildings uh, as places where people can uh, uh, contribute in some way, maybe to graffiti boards or whatever it might be. And uh, uh, let, let, let's use the creative thinking. I think that's, that's an important uh, uh, question and, and, and just a challenge to keep, keep uh, that creativity that was in the lockdown going out of the lockdown as well. I, this, Sorry, go on, John. This for me is where the walk becomes important. You know, the walk by the church into the church, round the church, that actually it gives you time to pray as you do that, to listen to God, to imagine creative things and, and to think what that might mean. And it is both you know, the kind of now, the next few months and the, the longer, longer period of time and, and how the building is used. And although whenever we get to be using the building more corporately, it will be different. There'll be the hygiene issue. There'll, be the, there'll still be almost certainly be social distancing issues. So we won't have such larger you know, congregations will be smaller. Um, that is all that that restriction is also an opportunity to think and experiment differently. So I, I you know, I think there is obviously a security in going back to the routines that we know that, and, and that happens in the whole realm of society. Um, but there's not opportunity for experiment uh, that actually in the way that we do our worship, instead of sitting in rows, we might do differently instead of having long monologues from one person, uh, unless of course it's me. Um, then actually there's a, a, there are other ways of engaging the word. And if we like, there are other ways of preaching that don't require, you know, the, the explanation of God's word, the exploring of God's word don't require um, those long monologues. And actually truth can be better embedded in other ways. Can I just add that um, I think it's important we remember this is God's building, not our building. Uh, yes, we are the people of God, but ultimately uh, the building is to be used as he chooses, as he directs, and that that's where the prayer and the discernment should come in. And I would want to encourage you to uh, not just listen to your congregation, but listen to your community, to, uh, the council, talk to, to those in, in community groups, because maybe the building can be used in new ways for the wider community, as appropriately, uh, with all the restrictions, and, and maybe there's an opportunity for um, the building to come uh, to have a, a new lease of life uh, for, for more people than you had beforehand. Uh, but let's listen and let's see where God is opening doors at this time for needs that maybe are there coming out of the lockdown. So, Paul, I want to ask you a question. Actually, if you were you know, the local minister going back into your, your church, um, who are the key people that you would contact uh, in your community? And, and, and how is the, the access to those people gained? Well, Hopefully you've already got a relationship with your local council, for example, so talk to them. Uh, maybe talk to uh, uh, your GPs, your social services, um, and, uh, and some of the community groups. And maybe if you have users who, who, who've already used your building, you can talk to them. But, but not just to them about their, their, their needs, but maybe other needs that they're uh, aware of. Uh, hopefully we, we already have those relationships, so we don't need to make them. But we can make them fairly easily. And I think it's a lot of goodwill. Uh, in, in the community towards the church at the moment, amongst councils, certainly. Politicians tend to be pretty positive towards the church at the moment. So let's build on that goodwill uh, and offer um, uh, our buildings for the sake of the whole community, not just for the needs of, of the church congregation. So as we try and bring this to a close after our 15 minutes, um, it's next summer and um, in a couple of words, what would you like people to be saying about your church building, people from inside the church and outside the church. A couple of words. John. Can I make it three words? It's accessible. Oh, okay, go on then. <laughs> accessible, it's en engaging and it's releasing. Paul. And I would just want to come back to that principle that it is a resource for mission uh, and not a uh, 
something that we own and, and, and keep a strong hold and control of. Great, thank you very much. And thank you everyone for watching. Um, I know this time we've been focusing on church buildings very briefly, but we will do some more in this series and we'll focus on other aspects of church life as we emerge out of lockdown. Thank you very much. Thank you.